Welcome to the SEI podcast series, a production of Carnegie Mellon University's Software Engineering Institute. The SEI is a federally funded research and development center sponsored by the U.S. Department of Defense and operated by Carnegie Mellon University. A copy of today's podcast is available at the SEI website at www.sei.cmu.edu slash podcast. My name is Suzanne Miller. I'm a principal researcher here at the SEI. And today I'm very pleased to introduce my fellow colleague and researcher, Harry Levinson. Harry Levinson and I work together on a project of the Air Force that he's going to talk about today, the Distributed Common Ground System. And I'm going to let Harry introduce himself and tell us a little bit about what he's been doing at the SEI for the last several years and, and before that as well. I've, I've been at the uh, SEI for just over 10 years, uh, working on a lot of different uh, Air Force programs, uh, mostly in the uh, realm of what's called C4, uh, okay. command and control, communications and computers, uh, everything from satellite terminals to um, business systems. Uh, the, the Air Force DCGS is a uh, program that uh, focuses on intelligence um, gathering, but the um, uh, to, in order to do this requires a lot of computers, a lot sure. of storage, a lot of networking, and uh, bringing a lot of those uh, skill sets from throughout the SEI to Air Force DCGS has, I think, been a a good asset. So this is a long-standing program, and it is now evolving sort of to into its next life, I'll call it. Um, and one of the big challenges has been how do we get legacy programs like this to deliver more quickly than in the past. There's lots of things about how slow the acquisition system is in the in the Department of Defense, and and DCGS is one of the programs that is trying some new approaches to that. Um, so. There are many things they're doing differently than they have in the past, but one of them, which is one of the things that I'm working on with you, is adopting Agile methods. So do you want to talk a little bit about how they came to understand that as something that might be useful to them and what our role is in helping them with that? Yes. Uh, they, they, over the past uh, 10, 15 years, they've built up uh, some great capability. Uh, the problem has been that this uh, capability is very... Uh, we call it stovepiped, mm -hmm. um, that it's very hard to uh, sustain and manage. Uh, and tr we're trying to help them evolve that system using uh, agile uh, techniques, um, working in uh, incremental, uh, more iterative approaches to deliver capability in smaller chunks. And that's a, that's a big deal for these guys because there's lots of people that want to use those capabilities and they're all on a different cadence, right? Some of them need it tomorrow, some of them need it six months from now. So one of the things that we're finding in other settings that use Agile techniques is that we can prioritize things a little differently than we have in the past and use some of that knowledge about the user and how they need, how and when they need things to actually make deliveries a little bit more in time for the user. Um, what are some of the unique challenges that, that DCGS has in relationship to that? Well, DCGS has a lot of um, different uh, engineering groups that are uh, have been focused on different parts of the system and getting them in the same um, schedule and and um, what I know what synchronization yeah, synchronization is uh, is very difficult um, and especially as they've been working in their legacy systems. Uh, they've, they had a lot of problems as more and more capability was put into a single release. Uh, getting all that integrated and synchronized was very difficult. And we're trying to help them understand, you know, moving to smaller releases right. and smaller um, delivery of uh, capability will help them synchronize their delivery um, and being able to get into a more... Um, regular cadence of delivery right. uh, will help them understand uh, and develop their processes for delivering on a regular basis. And, and the other thing that comes into play with this is, as you said, is integration. When we have the stovepipe kinds of system elements, there's a lot of interfaces. When you're dealing with a lot of sensor data and you're trying to process that and fuse mm -hmm. that and distribute that out to the people that need it, 
getting the right interfaces is, is a big problem in those kinds of systems. And so one of the things that we get with Agile is we get faster feedback. So if we have interfaces that don't work right, we find out about it sooner and we get a, a, a more robust kind of interface across the, the set of things, the common you right. know, kinds of set of right. things that, that DCGS is, is partly about. Right. Right. So and what do you see as the biggest challenge that an organization like DCGS that has the stovepipes already in place and has all these very different ways of dealing with um, how they do contracting, how they do engineering, when they move to this iterative, incremental, small batch, faster delivery, what, what do you see as the challenges they're facing? My experience um, as a software engineer uh, throughout my career has been mostly over on the commercial side. Mm -hmm. And on the commercial side, um, being able to adapt new technologies to new different processes is a lot easier. And what I learned when I came uh, to the Software Engineering Institute and to be able to um, work with um, government uh, programs, I found that the uh, ability to adapt and change the way that uh, Pro, uh, um, systems are acquired, um, you know, quite often it's very difficult for these organizations to change. And so being able to uh, help them understand the direction that they want to go and being able to uh, show them a path for change, um, I, I, I think is very important to uh, uh, helping them deliver this uh, capability right. on a more regular basis. So one of the things that I see, so my, my role in this is to help explicitly with the Agile adoption and helping them with the changes that, that they are going to be facing, um, is to help them with training. And what are some of the topics that, that if you were to recommend to another program, you know, if you're going to get involved in Agile, what kinds of things do you want to make sure you get training about so that you're ready for this when it comes into your program? There are um, lots of different Agile um, methodologies out there. Um, getting familiar with the uh, basic tenets, uh, the um, Agile Manifesto mm -hmm. is, is, is the, a good start. Right. But there's lots of different uh, methodologies that, you know, just pick one. Just, just start with uh, understanding um, some of the techniques that are out there. Sure. Uh, from a government setting, you're probably not going to be actually doing the development, but understanding how the uh, contractors are going to be doing their work is very important. Um, you know, being able to bring the uh, agile principles into a program office, into a uh, government setting, like I was saying earlier, is is a is a is a huge change. It's 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 it's. Um, very difficult uh, to make, uh, to help uh, for people to change. I sure. Say. Well, people, yeah. one of the things that, that uh, you know, is, yeah. is a truism is that, uh, you know, nobody likes to be changed, right? Everyone, right. everyone will change, but nobody likes, likes to, to be, be changed. changed. And so understanding how this can benefit your role is one of the things right. that we try to help people with in, in some of the training and things that we do with them as well as the coaching. Right. One of the other um, uh, differences between a lot of different commercial settings and the government is the government programs are often very big. Mm -hmm. And so being able to take uh, commercial techniques into government settings means you have to figure out how to scale. Sure. And um, uh, there are uh, multiple versions of uh, scaling Agile out there sure. uh, that help uh, programs uh, try to deal with the uh, multiple teams, the uh, different value streams that exist uh, as you're trying to develop programs. Um, and, and there's lots of courses out there that, pe that people sure. can take. And one of the things that, you know, that you've been able to help us uh, deliver uh, is a combination of here's some of the challenges that we have in the government mm. and here's the uh, agile, uh, scaled agile models that we have. You know, how can we uh, blend those right. together? And, and that turns out to be pretty important because when you do the scaling, as you talk about, mm -hmm. we're not just talking about now the software development. The software development teams, which are the contracted teams typically, right. are doing the development. The government is is 
interacting with them, but they're not actually doing the development for the most part. And But what the government is doing is the systems engineering, determining the architecture, determining how things are going to get deployed, determining how they're going to get tested. And that stuff's got to interact with the incremental iterative thing. One of the challenges that I'm seeing that is not uncommon in other settings, but DCGS exhibits this, all, uh, also exhibits this, is figuring out how to test these things uh, in a government setting. Because in the government, we have uh, a development test organization, an operational test organization that are, that are really siloed away from the acquisition and meant to be independent and you know, have these mandates. But you really want them to be more integrated into the development cycle. So kind of trying to break down some of those cultural norms, DCGS is, is out on the cutting edge uh, of that particular process. And, and my observation so far is they're actually taking that very seriously they are, they, they and are trying to do that. They are taking that very seriously. They are um, trying to figure out how to do uh, all the different levels of test from the uh, um, development test at the uh, uh, contractor level and then bringing that into a uh, integration lab right. um, and then moving that up through the uh, various uh, what they call D, uh, D, uh, DT and OT type right. testing, developmental testing development te developmental testing and operational testing and then the final certification uh, the big challenge there is that um, in order to get uh, systems into use, uh, they have to go through all those levels of uh, test and to be on a regular schedule, right. uh, regular cadence, uh, you know, whether that, uh, getting that down to 30 days is uh, almost like uh, uh, dreaming. It's very, it's very difficult to do. Yeah, well, it's yeah. like, you know, biting an elephant, you know, one, one chunk at a time, somewhere. or eating an elephant, That's one right. chunk at a time, you know, you, you have to start somewhere before you can get to the final place. And, and that's really, that incremental strategy is one that we're also seeing in the adoption, not just in the development, mm -hmm. in terms of not trying to bite off too much as we go forward. We, we are working on just a few uh, pilot projects. With mm -hmm. them, uh, so that, uh, like you say, that uh, you know, you, the recommendation is not to switch over in one day, is to right. start small. Start with one or two projects. Uh, learn, learn fast. From those, learn fast, uh, and and being able to adjust uh, fast. Mm. Right. You know, you can learn, but you also have to be willing to uh, change and adjust as as you learn that something isn't working. Yes. In agile communication, we call that inspect and adapt. Okay. We, we go after yes. that. Yes. So, this program, we're in the middle of pilots. Um, and what is it that you see sort of as the next challenge once, once we've got things kind of rolling out in the Agile space? What are some of the other things that um, you hope that the SEI can help the DCGS program with? As we've, as we've been speaking about the uh, incremental and the iterative approach, um, the, that the fact that the uh, government has to uh, take over the um, Understanding of the architecture and control um, a lot of the um, higher level decisions mm -hmm. that it'll enable the uh, contracting agile teams to work effectively. Um, that actually uh, starts to bring in a lot of um, concepts that the uh, Department of Defense is trying to uh, encourage, which is owning the technical baseline and open systems architecture. And um, those are all very good uh, models for, for um, uh, getting a better uh, technical understanding of the systems and being able to uh, make decisions. And they both uh, help um, divide a larger system into uh, smaller chunks and, and enables the um, uh, uh, mo movement of, of or the decisions of the program office to being able to contract out uh, smaller right. uh, uh, software applications or software modules to different uh, contracting teams. So that interfaces in, and with the Agile, so these are things that sort of contribute to each other, the open systems and the government as the integrator working in smaller batches is very compatible with the Agile iterative small batch approach as well. So these are all things that 
that we hope together will synergize some of the uh, the program challenges into, into into new solutions, right? Right, yeah, definitely. The um, um, you know the moving with the agile uh, methodology and the um, software development technique or architectural techniques, mm -hmm. I should say. Um, they're very they, they they as they become more compatible. It definitely makes the uh, uh, ability to be more iterative and uh, incremental um, um, uh, feasible. Excellent. So I want to thank you for joining us, Harry, and uh, your article on the year in, in the year in review, which is the SEI's uh, annual fiscal year publication about all our projects. Um, I hope people will go and look for that because it's a very interesting article. If I, even it if is. I am involved in it myself, <laughs> I guess it I have is. to say that. Uh, but uh, you can download a PDF of that at our digital uh, library, sei.cmu.edu slash year in review, and that's all three words smashed together. Um, and it doesn't only showcase our work with customers, it showcases our research work, so it's a uh, uh, it's, it's, a, it's a good publication to get uh, oriented around the SEI and its work. This podcast is available on the SEI website, as I said before, at sei.cmu.edu slash podcasts, and on Carnegie Mellon University's iTunes U site. As always, if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to contact us at info at sei.cmu.edu. Thank you for watching. <laughs>